Imagine walking on planet Earth hating one-fourth of its inhabitants because of your despicable peanut-sized brain that thumb sucks information fed by the media. Assalamu ala man al huda. All praise is due to Allah. We send blessings and salutations on our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. As you guys noticed that Jordan Peterson didn't reply to my previous video, nor did he accept my invitation. The invitation is still there. If he is interested, he can reach me through this YouTube channel. I honestly did not expect the video would reach uh, 100,000 views and around, I think, 2,000 subscribers and 2,000 comments. Mostly positive and it's much appreciated. Uh, I'm not a blogger I'm, uh, or a public figure. I'm not a scholar. I'm not a preacher or, or an imam or a mufti, the one who gives rulings in Islam. I'm simply a regular practicing Muslim, a student of comparative religion who felt obliged to answer Jordan Peterson since no one was giving a full descriptive response to his so-called message to Muslims video at that time. And he took that opportunity to clear up some misconceptions about Islam, its division, sectarianism from its coexistential point of view. I've also noticed uh, that this video attracted an audience of diverse background, especially from the Western world. So I'm gonna dedicate this page to clear up misconceptions about Islam. Uh, as I'm gonna release videos of the most controversial topics in Islam, such as women in Islam, slavery in Islam, racism, the Islamic perspective about LGBT, Islamic history that is removed from the Western uh, books, for example, uh, other topics such as uh, miracles of the Quran, and much more, inshallah, if God wills. For the non-Muslim audience who would like to know about Islam from a Muslim point of view, uh, an unbiased perspective, you are more than welcome as you will learn some interesting facts about Islam. Facts that you will never hear from the news and the media. Everything in this world come and go. When you get your paycheck, for example, you spend it. When you, when you eat, you, you waste. But one thing stays in your head forever and that is knowledge. So it's a win-win situation. You're not losing uh, anything. And the more we know about other people, other religion, the smarter we get and the less of ignorant we are or the less of ignorant we become. And um, for, the, for the haters or bigots out there, uh, as I noticed some despicable derogatory comments, you are also more than welcome as you will learn how your enemy thinks. Uh, how about that? Uh, Look, I, I, I really feel bad for you and I believe that you need help yourself. And stop throwing rocks at people when your own house is made out of glass. It's easy for me to cherry pick some verses and, uh, from any religious scripture and say, look, it says kill, it says this, it says that, without reading its context and understanding what it's talking about. I'll give you an example. Imagine I'm, I'm a bigot or hater. Let's just say I'm a bigot or hater. And I'm a multi-billionaire who owns the news and the media. Uh, do you know how easy it is to paintbrush an entire religion as barbaric or warlord? It's very easy. I'll, I'll just show footages of the KKK carrying the cross, killing people who share different skin color. Or gang members who believe someone died for their sins and carry the cross and kill people willy-nilly. Or like Mussolini, who was he? Christian. Hitler, who was he? Christian. Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and on and on and on. It's very easy, but we don't do that. Uh, there's an English saying where it says, never argue with a fool, people might not notice the difference. So I'm not gonna spend time replying to these nonsensical comments but hey, you can be my pen pal. How about that? And we can CC Jordan Peterson. Anyways, I feel sad for you, honestly. Carrying hate towards a religion that is followed by 2 billion people worldwide, that accumulates to 25%, one-fourth of humanity. Imagine walking on planet Earth hating one-fourth of its inhabitants because of your despicable peanut-sized brain that thumb sucks information fed by the media. For those who are spending their time attacking Islam and spreading their radical hate, thank you. Uh, no, really, you are, you are definitely doing us Muslims a big favor. 
look, there's no such thing as bad publicity. You can say anything you want about me as long as you spell my name correctly. So keep hating, just make sure you spell Islam correctly so that you can attract more and more people or more and more ignorant people like you, then they will start doing their own research and realizing and, and, and realize that Islam is the total opposite of your understanding of Islam that matches, the, uh, that matches ISIS understanding of Islam. Yes, uh, you are just as radical as, as, as them since you share the same understanding of Islam. To us, radical is radical whether it's far right or far left of the spectrum of extremism. So continue your free marketing exposure of Islam. Billions of dollars were spent to defame Islam on the news and the media. And at the same time, Islam was the fastest growing religion in the world. God said in the Quran, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا يُنْفِقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ لِيَصُدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَسَيُنْفِقُونَهَا ثُمَّ تَكُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ حَسْرًا Those who disbelieve spend their wealth in, uh, to hinder others from the path of Allah. They will continue to spend till the point of regret. So your bad publicity of Islam has its backfire effect. And that is common sense. Uh, God Almighty also said in the Quran, uh, they will try to extinguish the light of Allah with their, with their mouths. But Allah will only allow His light to be perfected, even if it dismay of the believers. So the bigots and haters, thank you very much and continue your uh, hate to help us spread Islam. Anyways, nonetheless, the majority of the viewers are Muslims and non-Muslims who are sincere about knowing about Islam. Uh, a lot of charming positive comments and the least I should do is uh, to thank you. So I, 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 really, I really appreciate it. To my Muslim brothers and sisters, I love you in the sake of Allah. And it will be foolish of me not to confess that anything correct I said or anything I said that is correct is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and any mistake or discrepancy is from myself or the shaitan speaking of which I made two mistakes in the previous video that was uh, pointed out by people around me as well as uh, uh, in, in, the, in the comments and I promise that I will release another video clearing up these mis mistakes I've used the wrong pronunciation of the minor syllable vowel sound from the Quranic verse in which I said Ya Ahlul Kitabi and it's supposed to be Ya Ahlal Kitabi I also said Ma Kana Ibrahima instead of Ma Kana Ibrahimu One might say that uh, what's the big deal is just a syllable sound or a minor uh, vowel Actually this is why the, the Quran has been preserved for more than 1400 years it's memorized cover to cover by millions around the globe. And any tiny mistake in its pronunciation will be noticed instantly, even by a non-native speaker, as my uh, Muslim American friend was the first who pointed this out for me. And that reminded me of a, of a story in the ninth century where a calligrapher or a, or a copyist, an artist who draws text or books, because back then they didn't have uh, computers and, and press, or printing press. He was practicing a religion called Sabia or Sabian. Anyways, long story short, he wanted to know which of the three religion is actually from God Almighty. So he wrote the Torah in a nice calligraphy and the Bible and the Quran and uh, he purposely made mistakes in those books. Later he gifted the Torah to a Jewish rabbi and the Bible to a Christian priest and none of them uh, noticed that the mistakes that he did. When he gifted the Quran to a Muslim, that Muslim opened the book and noticed that the mistake, he noticed the mistake and he, refuted, and he refused to accept that gift. And he said, we cannot accept that because there is a tiny mistake. So the calligrapher later uh, accepted Islam because of that, because of the conclusion that, uh, his conclusion that the book that is preserved has to be from God Almighty. So anyways, I would like to uh, rectify my mistake I did uh, in the pronunciation, as well, I'm, as, well I'm, as well as I'm always open to be rectified. 
I would like to also clarify to my Muslim brothers and sisters the difference between uh, theology and creed. They are two different things, uh, yet they are related. Uh, it gets a bit confusing, but anyways, theology is the study of the nature of God and creed, uh, which is aqidah, and that is the set of belief. And the Sunni and Shi'i have differences in aqidah itself, that is creed, but not in terms of theology, meaning they all claim one God. Unlike Christianity, or in Christians, they differ in theology itself depending on what church they follow. For example, some believe that Jesus is part God, some believe he's God incarnate, some believe he's God himself, some believe, he, uh, some believe in a trinity, uh, some reject the Nicene Creed, such as the Unitarians and Christian Delphians, and uh, so on and so forth. So, just wanted, so I just wanted to uh, clarify to my Muslim brothers and sisters that I was replying to Jordan Peterson since he said, quote, uh, Muslim reach out to your sectarian divide, end quote. He forgot to advise the same to his video of uh, message to Christian churches because he, he can't since Christianity today is, is, is not just Sunni Shi'i, it's 200 Christian churches in the US alone and a staggering of 45,000 Christian denomination worldwide. And speaking of uh, sectarianism and division, for those who would like to know my manhaj or, or aqidah, uh, you have all the right uh, to manhaj check me since we are living in a time where there are a lot of religious innovation. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, in an authentic narration once asked, he once asked a woman, where is God? And she pointed up and said, above the heavens. Then he said, she is a believer. So for the skeptics out there, and in some extreme case, maybe cynics, I'm simply a Muslim. Uh, I call myself a Muslim because that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us. That's the, uh, the uh, this is what Allah gave us, the name, the title in the Quran. And I refuse to label myself with any man-made innovative title. My aqidah is Quran and the Sunnah by the understanding of our predecessors, starting from the Sahaba, the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, all the way to the scholars today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, uh, hold on to the rope of Allah and don't separate into sects. This is what Allah says. Oh, who says that? Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us through the Quran. And spreading or, or separating into sects and groups is strictly prohibited. The rope of Allah means the Quran, as it's mentioned uh, in, a, in a Hassan uh, uh, hadith. Uh, where the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that the rope of Allah is the Qur'an that is stretched from the heavens to the earth. And you can only understand the Qur'an through the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. Allah, alhamdulillah, uh, gave us everything. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said in an authenticated narration, he said, I left you on a clear white sheet. Its night is just like its day. No one lead astray from it, except that they will be doomed. Whoever lives in the future, they will see a lot of uh, separated disagreements. So stick to my sunnah and the sunnah of the caliphs that will come after me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger, peace be upon him, commanded us to unite and, and how to unite. So as Muslims, we don't take lessons from, uh, with all due respect from Jordan Peterson or Andrew Tate or Lawrence of Arabia. We stick with our Islamic values and standards uh, and what is in the Quran and the Sunnah. We do what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through that we get izzah, honor. Not to live in dhul, uh, in a humiliated, apologetic way to please others because they will never be pleased with you. Allah told us in the Quran, وَلَن تَرْضَ عَنْكَ الْيَهُودَ وَلَا النَّصَارَةَ حَتَّى تَتَّبِعَ مِلَّتَهُمْ They will never be pleased with you unless you follow their way of life, their realm of life. You know, democracy, imposing uh, aggressive feminism, LGBT, Q, Y, X, Z. No, you have all the right to stand up for what you believe in. Just like they have the right to believe in what they believe in. You're not a sexist or a misogynist if you don't agree to their idea of gender equality. 
each generation they have the they have new funny ideas like non-binary gender. I don't know in hundred years from now they might be like, uh, oh, we're monkeys or our grandparents were apes. As Muslims, we stick to what we believe in, regardless of what era we're living in. My beloved brother in Islam, have izzah and honor, and don't compromise your deen. And my dear sister, uh, you are truly honored with your hijab. Wallahi, you're honored with your hijab. You don't have to apologetically feel like you should always explain yourself to ignorant people when they approach you. They won't approach the nuns. That's for sure. They don't know uh, it's your choice. They don't know you are covering yourself uh, or you're covering your hair, imitating the best woman who ever walked on the face of planet, Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus, peace be upon him. Allah honored the woman and elevated her role in life. And that brings me to the next topic for the next video, inshallah, woman in Islam beyond stereotype. Excuse my militant straightforward approach i love you all in the sake of allah subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh